Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks. We're ready for our November the 11th lesson in A Course in Miracles workbook for students, lesson 315, reading out of the original edition. All gifts my brothers give belong to me. All gifts my brothers give belong to me. <laughs> Each day a thousand treasures comes to me with every passing moment. I am blessed with gifts throughout the day and, far, and value far beyond all things of which I can conceive. A brother smiles upon another and my heart is gladdened. Someone speaks a word of gratitude or mercy and my mind perceives this gift and takes it as its own. And everyone who finds the way to God becomes my savior, pointing out the way to me and giving me his certainty that what he learned is surely mine as well. And the prayer says, I thank you, Father, for the many gifts that come to me today and every day from every son of God. My brothers are unlimited in all their gifts to me. Now may I offer them my thankfulness that gratitude to them may lead me on to my creator and his memory. Wow, we're going to remember God as we learn to give thanks for all the gifts that we see being given. Now I offer them my thankfulness that gratitude to them may lead me on to my creator and his memory. Okay, don't ever underestimate the incredible power of giving thanks. Okay. All gifts my brothers give belong to me. As you watch those exchanges of kindness going on, random acts of kindness, some people call them, uh, as, as you see those things, give thanks. They're your gift. <laughs> All right, let's go take a look at our text reading now. And we're ready for, uh, we're ready for the answer to prayer in uh, chapter 8. It's the uh, section 11, the last section in chapter 8. And I said yesterday I wanted to talk just a moment more about uh, our last paragraph. So let's look at it in, in yesterday and then we'll read. Before you do, let's take just a minute and let me show you. I've, I've been out here collecting black walnuts and uh, there's what they look like when they first fall after they've been sitting out in the out in the weather a bit, they turn black, uh, but that's totally fine. The husk on them is used for medicine. A lot of people use them for parasitic worms. I found this on uh, RX list. Black walnut husks have been used to treat intestinal uh, and parasitic worm infections and other infections such as diphtheria, syphilis, and leukemia. Uh, I found this on WebMD about the nuts. Black walnuts have higher levels of antioxidants, polyunsaturated fatty acids, and other help health promoting compounds than the more common English walnut, which is your uh, Juglan reg regia, and the black walnut is the Juglans nigra or nigra. Um, let's see, making, so, so basically the black walnuts are useful in reducing the risk of cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. Wow. So anyway, I was just out picking some this morning that fallen off the trees and um, thought I'd just show you a little bit. You can take those things. Let's take one here that's uh, turning black. It's best to let them dry. You can get the husk off. by I've heard people just setting them out in their driveway there and, and driving over them. But let me just show you. Take a couple rocks and give them a little hit. That'll knock the husk off. See, now that, that husk is, uh, you can make a tea out of it and use it for a People use them for gargle, and it has a strong dye in it, too, kind of a yellow dye. Uh, I've heard of people using it for uh, hair dye. <laughs> and then, if it's a survival situation, you'd go ahead and break it right now. You'd take your rock and give it a, a couple hits, and up, broke it really hard. Okay, now, when you break it that hard, you've kind of crushed all the meat, and so you just got to kind of go down through there and... and pick it out and uh, if you don't hit it quite that hard 
you can uh, you can take the meat and I, I have high sure so you can see it anyway I hit that a little too hard so anyway you can take your knife if you don't hit it quite that hard and kind of pick like here's one here that that didn't get see how that right there and you take your knife and just pop that out of there you see that there you go now there's an that's the way you want it to be and they'll come out you get hard kind of black walnut to get a full nut you'll get pieces but they're very tasty very good for you so that's your black walnut that's what i'm sitting under this black walnut tree that i've been picking them under okay let's take a look chew that up <laughs> Remember then that God's will is already possible and nothing else will ever be. This is the simple acceptance of reality because only this is real. You cannot distort reality and know what it is. And if you do distort reality, you will experience anxiety, depression, and ultimately panic because you're trying to make yourself unreal. When you feel these things, do, so when you feel anxiety, depression, or panic, do not try to look beyond yourself for truth. Don't look beyond. You don't have to go outside yourself. For truth can only be found within. Say, therefore, Christ is in me. And where he is, God must be. For Christ is part of him. Because for, so let me read it another way. Christ is in me. And where Christ is, God must be. Because Christ is the connecting link between all of God's parts, you, me, uh, all our connecting link is the Christ. So Christ is in me, and where Christ is, God must be, for Christ is part of God. Okay? So I, I want to, that's an italicized part, the very last part of that section. Just want to make sure you took it with you. Okay, let's take a look now at uh, the answer to prayer. Everyone who has ever tried to use prayer to request something has experienced what appears to be failure. This is not only true in connection with specific things which might be harmful, but also in connection with requests which are strictly in line with this course. The latter, in particular, might be incorrectly interpreted as proof that the Course does not mean what it says. You must remember, however, that the Course does state, and repeatedly, that its purpose is the escape from fear. Okay, there's the, the purpose for the Course, is the escape from fear. Uh, isn't that what peace is, the escape from fear? When you have no fear at any level, well then you have peace. So this is our, our book, is, is, is our curriculum is to teach us to, um, to, to be free of fear or to um, remember or to be um, aware and bathed in our eternal heritage, which is peace, not fear. Uh, you must remember, however, the Course does state and repeatedly that its purpose is the escape from fear. 108. Let us suppose then that what you request of the Holy Spirit is what you really want, but you are still afraid of it. Should this be the case, your attainment of it would no longer be what you want, even if it is. Should this be the case, your attainment of it would no longer be what you want, even if it is. This accounts for why certain specific forms of healing are not achieved even though the state of healing is. <laughs> okay, you, we can get to the state of healing, but you may not get the actual uh, healing. He's going to explain why. It frequently happens that an individual asks for physical healing because he is fearful of bodily harm. Okay, he's fearful of bodily harm, therefore he asks for physical healing. At the same time, however, if he were healed physically, the threat to his thought system would be considerably more fearful to him than its physical expression. 
In this case, he's not really asking for release from fear, but for the removal of a symptom which he has selected. This request is therefore not for healing at all. Wow, I think we should read that one once again. There is a lot in that paragraph. Let us suppose then that what you request of the Holy Spirit is what you really want, but you are still afraid of it. Should this be the case, your attainment of it would no longer be what you want, even if it is. This accounts for why certain specific forms of healing are not achieved, even though the state of healing is. It frequently happens that an individual asks for physical healing because he is fearful of bodily harm. At the same time, however, if he were healed physically, the threat to his thought system would be considerably more fearful to him than its physical expression. In this case, he's not really asking for release from fear, but for the removal of a symptom which he has selected. Remember, all bodily sicknesses are uh, self-engineered. They're ones that you, at a soul level, you, you, you ask for it, or it couldn't have ever occurred, is what he's trying to say. And it's, it's that, it's the, 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 it's the source that we want to heal, not the symptom. So uh, in this case, he's not really asking for release from fear, but for the removal of a symptom which he has selected. This request is therefore not for healing at all. The Bible, emphasis, 109, the Bible emphasizes that all prayers are answered, and this must be true if no effort is wasted. The very fact that one has asked the Holy Spirit for anything will ensure a response, yet it is equally certain that no response given by the Holy Spirit will ever be one which would increase fear. It is possible that his answer will not be heard at all. It is impossible, however, that it will be lost. If it is possible that his answer will not, it, excuse me, it is possible that his answer will not be heard at all. Let's back up here. The Bible emphasizes that all prayers are answered, and this must be true if no effort is wasted. The very fact that one has asked the Holy Spirit for anything will ensure a response. Yet it is equally certain that no response given by the Holy Spirit will ever be one which will increase fear. It is possible that his answer will not be heard at all. It is impossible, however, that it will be lost. There are many answers which you have already received but have not yet heard. I assure you that they are waiting for you. It is indeed true that no effort is wasted. Wow, there's a principle we, that we should keep in mind, that no effort is wasted. Anytime you try to, to, to reach God, you're going to be met with uh, assistance. No, no, no wasted effort. And he says, you may not hear the answer, but there'll, be a, there'll always be an answer. Uh, paragraph 110. If you would know your prayers are answered, never doubt a son of God. Wow, what? If you would know your prayers are answered... Never doubt a son of God. Do not question him and do not confound him. For your faith in him is your faith in yourself. If you would know God and his answer, believe in me whose faith in you cannot be shaken. Can you ask of the Holy Spirit truly and doubt your brother? Believe his words are true because of the truth which is in him. You will unite with the truth in him and his words will be true. As you hear him, you will hear me. Listening to truth is the only way you can hear it now and finally know it. As you hear him, you will hear me. So let's, let's, are you getting this? Let back it up just a little bit. If you would know God and his answer, believe in me whose faith in you cannot be shaken. Can you ask the Holy Spirit truly and doubt your brother? Can you ask the Holy Spirit truly and doubt your brother? Believe his words are true because of the truth which is in him. 
You will unite with the truth in him and his words will be true. You will unite with the truth in him and his words will be true. As you hear him, you will hear me. Listening to truth is the only way you can hear it now and finally know it. Okay, should we stop? Let's read one more paragraph. The message your brother gives you is up to you. What does he say to you? What would you have him say? So it's up to you. What do you want him to say? Your decision about him determines the message you receive. Wow. Your decision about your brother determines what message you're going to receive of him. You want the Holy Spirit's one voice to speak through your brother. Remember that the Holy Spirit is in him and his voice speaks to you through him. What can so holy a brother tell you except truth? But are you listening to it? Your brother may not know who he is, but there is a light in his mind which does know. This light can shine into yours, making his words true and making you able to hear them. His words are the Holy Spirit's answer to you. Is your faith in him strong enough to let you hear? So we'll stop with that question. Why don't you answer that question? This light can shine into your mind, making his words true and making you able to hear them. His words are the Holy Spirit's answer to you. Is your faith in him strong enough to let you hear? Can you hear the Holy Spirit through your brother and your sister? All right, let's stop there for today. And let's go take a look at what is the what 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 is the last judgment? And this is under our section all gifts my brothers give belong to me. And if it helps you, say all gifts my brothers and sisters give belong to me. All gifts that anyone gives belongs to me. <laughs> Be looking for the gifts. What is the last judgment? Christ's second coming gives the Son of God the gift to hear the voice for God proclaim that what is false is false and what is true has never changed. And this the judgment is in which perception ends. At first you see a world which has accepted this as true, projected from a now corrected mind. And with this holy sight, perception gives a silent blessing and then disappears its goal accomplished, and its mission done. The final judgment on the world contains no condemnation. The final judgment on the world. <laughs> the final judgment. You've all thought about the final judgment. Oh my gosh, I'm going to fear God's final judgment. Look what he says. The final judgment on the world contains no condemnation. <laughs> For it sees the world is totally forgiven, without sin, and wholly purposeless. Without a cause, and now without a function in Christ's sight, it merely slips away to nothingness. There it was born, and there it ends as well. And all the figures in the dream in which the world began go with it. Bodies now are useless and will therefore fade away because the Son of God is limitless. You who believe that God's last judgment would condemn the world to hell along with you, accept this holy truth. God's judgment is the gift of the correction he bestowed on all your errors, freeing you from them and all effects they ever seem to have. To fear God's saving grace is but to fear complete release from suffering, return to peace, security, and happiness and union with your own identity. God's final judgment is as merciful as every step in his appointed plan to bless his son and call him to return to the eternal peace he shares with him. Be not afraid of love, for it alone can heal all sorrow, wipe away all tears, and gently waken from his dream of pain the son whom, whom God acknowledges as his. Be not afraid of this. Salvation asks you give it welcome. And the world awaits your glad acceptance, which will set it free. 
This is God's final judgment. You are still my holy son, forever innocent, forever loving, and forever loved. As limitless as your creator and completely changeless and forever pure. Therefore awaken and return to me. I am your father and you are my son. What a beautiful last judgment, God's final judgment. Okay, let's take a, another look at all gifts my brothers give belong to me. And something else I wanted to tell you just quickly before we read that, when you do smash these to the point, and I've got a nutcracker, I can break them off. They, it's better to let them dry for a little bit and the nuts will come out much easier. You know, set them by, the, by your wood stove or somewhere and they can just let them dry for a while. I, I've heard of people putting them in the oven at a real low temperature, dry them quicker. Uh, but another thing you can do is make sure you get all the husk off pretty good. And once you've done that, you can break them up totally, and even if they're green, and then pour warm water over and, and mix them in warm water and make sure it's totally broken up. And what will happen is the, 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 the nut part will will dissolve in the water. You may have to boil it. I haven't actually tried this. I've just heard that you can make milk out of it. I think I might have mentioned to you about this, but I was just going to say that you can you can take, you can leak, instead of going to all the trouble of getting the nut extracted from the shell and eating it, just break the thing up, put it in boiling water, and it will turn into a milk that you can then just drink. So uh, walnut milk get your beneficial nutrients that way out of it and get you some energy. Okay, all gifts my brothers give belong to me. Each day a thousand treasures come to me with every passing moment. I'm blessed with gifts throughout the day in value far beyond all things of which I can conceive. A brother smiles upon another and my heart is gladdened. Someone speaks a word of gratitude or mercy, and my mind perceives this gift and takes it as its own. Are you looking for when people speak words of gratitude to others? Or, or they offer mercy? They, they, they return a, a kind word where they, they could have easily given an angry irritation? Those are the things you want to extract and realize that all gifts that a brother gives belong to you. So a brother smiles upon another and my heart is glad. Someone speaks a word of gratitude or mercy and my mind perceives this gift and takes it as its own. And everyone who finds the way to God becomes my savior, pointing out the way to me and giving me his certainty that what he learned is surely mine as well. And the prayer says, I thank you, Father, for the many gifts that come to me today and every day from every son of God. My brothers are unlimited in all their gifts to me. Now may I offer them my thankfulness that gratitude to them may lead me on to my creator and his memory. All gifts my brothers give belong to me. All gifts my brothers give belong to me. All gifts my brothers give belong to me.